Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today's video, um, we're going to be talking about the topic of the assurance of salvation. Now I know today I'm wearing a hat because I think I need a haircut and uh, I just wanted to uh, kind of hide that hair. I remember back in college, um, I didn't get haircuts too often because I mean, I like spending my money on food, especially uh, cookout. If you know, if you're from Tennessee or down south, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, getting back to today's topic, we're talking about assurance of salvation. So can we be sure of our salvation? I remember when I was working at Arby's when I was 17 years old, and uh, I was working the drive through one, one evening, and uh, this person uh, drove up to the window, and they handed me a card, and uh, they asked me, they're like, do you know where you're going to go when you die? And uh, on this card, of course, had some scripture and everything. And, um, you know, I let the gentleman know that I was 100% sure that I was going to heaven uh, because I had complete faith in Jesus Christ. And uh, he went on his way, and uh, it, that kind of stuck in my mind. Um, and I wonder, I wonder if you have any questions or doubts of whether or not you will be going to heaven when you die. Um, and so that's what I want to focus on today. Um, the assurance of salvation is the ability to, without a doubt, 100% answer with, yes, I am going to heaven. Heaven is my destination. And this is in contrast to the answer of, well, uh, maybe, or I hope so, or I'm not really sure. I don't know. Um, that's not assurance. And uh, what I want, my hope for you today is to give you um, that assurance that maybe uh, you have not fully accepted yourself yet. Um and maybe I hope that I can walk you through this and lead you to that uh, assurance of salvation if you have those doubts or feelings. And so assurance, uh, also this term can be a double-edged sword because uh, when speaking um, about two different extremes, when you're talking about this, of course, I, t I talked about the one extreme of, you know, not knowing for sure um, whether or not you're going to heaven. But the other side of that is um, an assurance that is uh, falsely based on uh, an incorrect doctrine that I will be talking about right now. It's a Calvinist view of once saved, always saved. And you may have um, heard this before, um, and maybe you've heard it as, you know, once in grace, um, always in grace or saved in grace. And um, so we have these two different views now. The once saved, always saved has its roots in the teachings and doctrine of Augustine. And um, he introduced the, the uh, doctrine of total depravity, which is the uh, first point in the five points of Calvinism, which I can make a whole other video on, and I can go into depth of um, what those are, which total depravity is linked directly to the preservation or the perseverance of the saints, which is actually the fifth um, part of the tulip or the five points of Calvinism. So Augustine kind of introduced this uh, doctrine, and then John Calvin uh, popularized this doctrine. And so we have total depravity, and that, of course, is directly linked to unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, perseverance of the saints, which in in direct result uh, comes to the doctrine of once saved, always saved. And so one scripture they like to draw from is from Romans 8, 31 through 39, which declares that nothing can separate us from the love of God. But of course, we know that God's love is unconditional. Nothing can separate us from God's love. I completely uh, believe that. But on the other hand, salvation is conditional. We must have faith in Jesus that he is both our Lord and Savior. We are commanded to be baptized. Now, I'll make a whole other video also um, on the meaning uh, of and importance of baptism in the Christian uh, walk and, and faith. And so repentance is also one of the conditions, along with confession of faith. Um, these four things are all conditions for salvation, which I will, um, like I said before, make a whole other video about. Just as salvation is condi conditional by virtue of free will, right? Because we... Uh, God gave us free will to either choose God or to reject God. Uh, so too is keeping our salvation. So keeping our salvation is just as conditional as um, receiving salvation. In the words of Jack Cottrell, staying saved is just as conditional as becoming saved. So in John 15, 1 through 6, uh, Jesus uh, talks about um, the vine that he is the vine and we are the branches and that we are called to abide in him. Otherwise, we will be thrown out. And we see here that one can be in Christ, but then by one's own initiative and 
uh, pay attention to this, not God's initiative, but by our own initiative because we have free will, um, which is the rejection of Christ results in the casting out of that branch. And so this uh, clearly depicts that um, those uh, people who are talking about being cast out were once on the inside, but are now on the outside. And so I'm going to read an excerpt from page 377 from Jack Cottrell's book, uh, Faith Once for All. And it says, Paul makes two points that totally disprove the once saved, always saved doctrine. First, when the natural branches, the Jews were confronted with the gospel and then refused to accept Jesus as their Messiah and Lord, they were broken off for their unbelief. Even if they were true believers in Yahweh and in a safe state prior to hearing the gospel, by virtue of rejecting Christ, they become they became unbelievers they fell, and thus were rejected by God and lost their salvation. Second, for the Gentiles who became believers and were grafted into the olive tree, Paul warns them to remain faithful, for if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. So we see here that it is a possibility that you um, can fall from grace. Um, in other words, you can lose your salvation. And remember, not by God's initiative, but by your, your own uh, tr- choice, um, by virtue of uh, free will and the possibility of free will, free will in this world. An even clearer teaching on the reality of falling from grace is Hebrews 6, 4 through 8. Actually, the entire letter uh, to the Hebrews is based on the fact that such a fall is possible. The letter is apparently being written to Jews um, who had become Christians, but who are now thinking they had made a mistake um, and are seriously considering abandoning their Christian faith and reconverting to Judaism. So the theme of the entire letter is the danger and the foolishness of such a decision. And so we see here that uh, people, uh, these um, Jews who became Christians, um, they were kind of unsure of whether or not they had made the right decision, and they wanted to go back and renounce their Christian faith and become uh, Jews again and go back to Judaism. They wanted to reconvert. Um, And so I want to move along with the question of how does one fall from grace? I kind of just went over that. A little bit, but I want to go a little bit more in depth because it is in direct contrast to this uh, false doctrine of once saved, always saved. And so, how do we fall from grace? It occurs when the faith, when your faith in the blood of Jesus dies, and Christians are called to take every opportunity they can to strengthen one's faith and constantly uh, be aware of how that faith can die. So there is a deliberate decision on the part of the faith bearer to simply stop believing in Christ, which means they, just like the Judaizers, they, they, they became Christians. So they were once in the vine. They were once, they once um, had attained salvation, but they wanted to uh, reconvert back to Judaism and renounce their faith in Christ and renounce their Christianity. And so there's the renouncement of faith. This can be due to intellectual doubts, uh, especially due to the historicity of Jesus and his works, which I, see, which I see a lot of going on today, or it could be a personal tragedy um, among many other reasons for someone to renounce their faith. Now, there's also a second um, way is the slow starvation of faith by which it may die. Faith uh, needs maturing and strengthening. It must be nurtured and nourished and exercised, and that these things can be done through spiritual disciplines, which God has laid out for us and given us in the scripture, which is Bible study, fellowship, an active church life, breaking of bread, prayer, consistent taking of the Lord's Supper. You know, he says that these things must not be forsaken. This is the true meaning of faith uh, without works is dead. And for uh, further um, ex- expounding on this, the parable of the sower seed uh, falls on the rocky ground, the rocky soil, and therefore um, that plant uh, barely develops any roots. The, it has shallow roots, um, and it slowly starves. And um, a third way that faith can die is by suffocation by sin, and this is also from the parable of the sower, with the um, where um, the seed falls onto the, the the thorny ground, or it's it, it falls among thorns, and this is when recurring sin and habitual sin come into our lives. And it chokes out the the faith that we have, and so that in um, the scripture says, you know, the plant was choked out. The worry of the world and deceitfulness of wealth suffocate that plant. Or um, in application, it suffocates the Christian. Some say it does not matter if we keep on sinning, um, but Romans six one, Paul clearly um, is contradicts this by saying we are not to continue in sin that grace may abound. He says by no means, you know, we sh- that we should do that that we are a new creation. Romans 8, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. Put, de- 
put to death the deeds of the body and you will live. Scripture also tells us to um, die to ourselves daily, to pick up our cross and die to ourselves, dying to our fleshly desires and desire the things that Christ desires of us and that the Holy Spirit um, desires and always becoming in alignment with that. And so continuing to sin, and this is what Jack Cottrell, how he puts it, continuing to sin is like opening the gates to a fort and letting the enemy inside. We cannot relax our faith and have false assurance. We must make a deliberate effort to keep our faith alive and strong. Otherwise, it's going to die. This all goes against the teaching of the false doctrine of once saved, always saved. Now I'm going to move on to the other extreme, which is um, what I mentioned uh, before, always trying, never sure. This is the answer of uh, to the question of where will you go when you die, or will you go to heaven when you die? It's the the answer of, well, I'm not sure, or maybe, or I don't know. Well, this way of thinking is all based on a uh, works-based religion or works-based Christianity, which we know is false. Salvation and attaining salvation is never about uh, being good enough. Um, the people who tend to think like this are people who are very conscious of their sins, and they're un and they constantly they 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 know and they they ruminate on their unworthiness of heaven, which brings about anxiety. And I want to hopefully remedy that for you um, today. If that if you are in that camp, if you think um, this way, and so um, the best way to explain the solution. Um, so we had the once saved, always saved, and then the always trying, never sure. But the third thing I want to give you guys. Uh, so that you guys can have full assurance of your salvation is the simply trusting, fully forgiven, and um, I, in this 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 idea, we can be a hundred percent sure that we are justified by the blood of Jesus. The assurance of salvation is fully dependent upon justification, which of course we learned in a previous video that uh, about justification and what that means and how that comes about by our faith in Jesus Christ and His blood um, and the atonement for our sins. Uh, that came as a result of that. So the Christian is forgiven, even though they are not perfect. And that is very encouraging to me. You know, even though we're not perfect, we can have full assurance that we are forgiven and that salvation is ours. First Peter 1 5, we are protect, protected by the power of God through faith. God is faithful and we must have faith. Hebrews 10 23 says he will never forsake us or cast us aside. God is a God of unfailing love. He gave us the cross, and it says in Scripture, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Being justified, we are positioned, or in other words, standing in the grace of God, which produces joy and exaltation of God. You know, when you come to realize that uh, you are unworthy, you know, the, the stance on the once, on the, on the um, always trying, never sure, they have one thing right, is that they are unworthy of heaven. But going a step further into the full assurance um, once we know that we have full assurance, for sure, by the justification of in, in Jesus Christ, that means we have no other uh, appropriate um, reaction or uh, resulting uh, feeling than that of exalting God. And so being justified, we are standing in the grace of God. We can hope. Biblical hope is confident expectation of something good that lies in the future. It's not just something that we are wishing for. It's not just wishful thinking, but it is a confident expectation of something good that lies in the future, not the present. Hope of salvation is fully knowing confidently that we are citizens of heaven. We're not there yet, but it is coming. And we can rest in that assurance because God is faithful. We must trust in the call and we must trust in the all sufficient blood of Christ. And in that trust and belief and faith, we are justified. It's not a question of how good am I, but how forgiven am I? Although our Christian life ought to be devoted to becoming more like Christ, which is sanctification, walking right in line with uh, becoming ever more uh, conformed to the image of, of Christ every day. That is, even though we are striving for that every day, on the other hand, we can have full assurance of our salvation in Christ Jesus. So that will um, end today's video. I hope you are encouraged by that. I hope it brings you peace and hope. And most of all, I hope it brings you joy. And uh, hopefully some of that anxiety that you may have had um, is gone. Um, if you have any more questions or you'd like me to expound upon anything uh, that I've said in this video, uh, please comment down below um, your thoughts, whether you have a question or not. I just want to know what you think. And uh, 
Also, let me know what uh, future questions you have or questions you have so I can um, make future videos. That's what I meant to say. And um, I want to do this for you guys because I think it is very helpful to uh, kind of work through these tough questions um, with the end goal of uh, becoming stronger in our faith and to also um, give hope to the rest of the world and be able to answer their questions when uh, people outside of the faith um, come to ask us these questions. All right, I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video.